worship printed in your bulletin and on the screen. We are here today because the weeping Mary of Magdala once said, We are here on this Easter morning because Jesus still comes into our locked spaces and says, We are here today like doubting Thomas, who finally cried, We are here like Peter, tempted to forget the call of Jesus. We're here this morning because of Jesus who asks us face to face. We gather here to whisper timidly. We are here as a congregation only because many faithful disciples have listened to Jesus' words. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Go and tell. He is risen.
shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No. no. In all these things more than conquerors through the one who loved us. We are sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God and Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. gospel reading this morning is Luke 24 verses 1 to 12. But on the first day of the week at early dawn they came to the tomb taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb but when they went in they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened.
All right, where, where's Andrew Pearson? Where's Andrew Pearson? Andrew Pearson? Come on down. Why? Because it's your birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Andrew. Happy birthday to you. Your birthday, too? I didn't think so. All right, the rest of you kids, come on down. How old are you, Andrew? 17? 27? 77? Seven. Just sit down. You got what? I have no idea what you said. That's okay. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Um, good morning. What were we singing last Sunday? Anybody remember? Any of you who were here remember what we were singing last Sunday? We were singing, Oh, the weather outside is frightful. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Remember? It was a big snowstorm. But today is different, isn't it? Today is different. Why is today different? What's today? Easter. 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 What is all about Easter? And anybody who says chocolate or chocolate bunnies or chocolate eggs uh, has to do push-ups. So, anyway. What? Jesus rose like what? He floated? Like he dove into the water and he floated? What? Bunny marshmallow. I should have mentioned those too. Okay, okay. Yes, Andrew. I'm done. My work here is done. Did you all hear that? He got it absolutely letter perfect. On Friday, Jesus died. You were here? Yeah, you were here. Yep. On Friday, Jesus died. Yesterday was, well, he wasn't. This morning, a bunch of women went to the tomb, and they said, he's not there. They went back and they told the disciples, they said, we went to the tomb to where Jesus was, but the stone was rolled away and he wasn't there. And what did the disciples say to those women? Do you know? They, they, well, they, they, no, they didn't say he's free. The women said he's free, but they said, kind of, sort of, you silly women. That's not real. That's just silly. That's just goofy. That's not exactly what they said, but it's kind of like that. Except for Peter. Peter went to the tomb. What? <laughs> you died on the cross right now. Well, and then it's Easter morning and you have to come back to life because that's what Jesus does. That's what Jesus does. Peter went to the tomb and he found out that the tomb was empty and that's Easter God loves us so much. God loves us so much. God loves us so much that we don't ever have to die. We get to live forever with God. Yes. God gives us love and vitamin C. You know, I could preach that. I could preach that. Let's have a prayer. Thank you, God, for Easter and for the empty tomb and for all of it, including marshmallow bunnies. Amen. Now we have all of these young people over here who are taking you out to do special things. 
like an Easter egg hunt. Hey, happy birthday. You can just follow them. Or you can go back and sit with your mom and dad. You do? Okay, you can go back to your seat. On this day, there are so many things for which we, sh we can be grateful. On this day, we can be grateful not just for this place and this time and these people, for this music, but we can also be thankful for that which isn't. And that which isn't is a body and a grave. We can be thankful that God loves us. God loves you so much that you don't ever die. You don't ever die. As the ushers prepare themselves to receive an offering, let's remember all of those things that we've been given and let's truly be grateful.
Almighty God, we are thankful for all that we have received, including life that goes beyond life. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. I would like you all to say thank you to our brass. I just found something out in between the services. One of you guys had a recital this past week. Who was that? A French horn recital. And I know that there is another one who has a recital later on today. Aaron, raise your hand. So it's not like there hasn't been a certain amount of preparation involved. Well, we are grateful. We are grateful because doesn't doesn't it just add to everything, including having the bells, including having the bells. And I promise I will never call you dingling again. As we come into a time of prayer, there are some. There are some special things that I would like us to remember to pray for. Alan K. Young are asking us for special prayers for Reverend Mike and Reverend Cindy Jones as they face Mike's health issues. I don't know that there is anything different. I don't know that there isn't anything different, but they are asking for prayers. Certainly we can do that. Jim Bennett is asking for prayers for the Archer family. Catherine died this past week, and her funeral is here on Tuesday at 10.30. He's also asking for prayers for all who are traveling this weekend. Jean Reinford asked for prayers for Foster because Foster came home from Texas just in time to go to the hospital with congestive heart failure. He is in Carl and will be home by Monday or Tuesday. Alan is asking for continued prayers for his niece, Faith, who is in the Carl um, MICU unit. She was born on the 13th of March at two pounds and two ounces. So, yes. Uh, this just is, I guess this is a prayer, but it's always a prayer because it's always a prayer of joy and wonder because there's John Dom sitting back there. John said earlier this morning to me, he said, you know, if Jesus could get up out of the tomb on this Sunday morning, I could get up out of bed and get to church. Yes. Edie is asking for prayers for a new great-grandson, Judah, born on March 7th in Arizona. Ben is grateful that his grandmother is here with us today. Happy Easter. And you know what? We're grateful that you're here too, Mark. And I'm not sure that I'm not sure that she is actually telling us this, but Maggie has a birthday tomorrow. Uh, apparently, she is not telling us this, is she? <laughs> so, Maggie, that, that's tomorrow, right? April 1st. April Fool Day. God love you. Guess what, Mom? Here I am. One other specific thing to pray for, a uh, specific person to pray for. Uh, the... Uh, I don't always understand how this happens, and and it, well, it just happened. The line in the bulletin that says the flowers were given by Bob and Julie Sterling is supposed to have a second line underneath it. It says, in memory of our dear friend Holly Storm. For one reason or another, that line was not put on there, but certainly we want to remember Holly. But we also want to remember, too, that in the last couple, three months, our congregation has been, it has experienced a great loss, a number of great losses. We have had many deaths in our congregation in the last couple of months, in the last year. There are people here who have experienced those losses in significant and deep ways. 
in this day becomes special and unique for them. Because this is the day on which we have proof positive, proof by absence that God loves us so much that God wants us to live with God forever. That God loves us so much that God looks past all of the little things that we think aren't perfect. God says you're perfect. So today, when we pray, remember those of our beloved who have met Jesus at the gate in the past few months, in the past year. Remember those people in your family, my parents, my brother, even my dog. Because if, trust me, my dog can't be in heaven, I don't want to go. But remember them. Pray for them. Pray for yourself and your loss and your hope. Remembering always, always, that God loves us so much that God lets us live forever. I'm going to pray up here. And I would invite you to pray with me. Let us pray. Almighty and wonderful God, we have sung your praises, we have sung your song. We have run to the tomb and found it empty, and our hearts were filled. Lord, we have heard the promises of life forever, and we understand a little. Help us understand more. Help us understand how complete we are, Help us understand how whole we are with you. Help us know that there is nothing we cannot face with your help and your strength. Help us understand that without you, we are nothing. Help us be your people to your people. Help us be your light in a dark world. All these things we pray in the name of the one who rose to show us how much you love us. All these things we pray in the name of the one who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It is the custom in the Christian church on Easter, going way back to apostolic times, that when I say, He is risen, you respond with, He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. 
oh, that was good. That was good. That had energy and, and you, like you knew what you were talking about. Yes, I like that. Once upon a time, I sang in a community choir. This happened to be in Bloomington Normal. And we sang this one piece. I remember what it was called. Maybe some of you have sung it. It's called the Beast, the Feast of Belshazzar. I don't know that I could tell you who the, who the composer was, but I do remember that it was very, very difficult. We also sang a Vivaldi piece, and the Vivaldi piece we practiced once. The other one we had three weeks to practice. But there was one section in this piece that we sang where there was the big choir and then there was a little choir. And the big choir was separated not into four parts, but into eight parts. And the little choir was separated not into four parts, but also into eight parts. So if you count them up, that's 16 parts, right? And they were 16 parts that were all singing different notes. Now, for those of you who are musical, you will understand that a chromatic scale only has 13 notes and we were singing 16 notes and we were all moving in different directions like this I remember having a particularly difficult time trying to sing my part and going to the conductor after one rehearsal and saying I really I'm, I'm really kind of lost I don't know how I'm supposed to do this and he said here's what you do you bring energy I said really that's it he said yeah, everybody else is singing different words. Everybody else is singing different notes. It really doesn't make any difference what you say or when you say it or any of that. It doesn't make any difference what note you're on because somebody's going to be singing it at some time. So you just bring lots of energy. I went, I could do that. He looked right over the top of whatever mistakes I was making. He looked right over the top of whatever flaws I was making and said... That's good. That's good. As long as you're bringing energy. And when we were done, he said to all of us, I love that. I love that. Now, to a lot of people, it sounded like chickens. But he thought it was exactly the way that it was supposed to sound. None of us live up to our own expectations. None of us do. We all think we somehow need to be perfect. I don't know how that happens. I don't know who raises us to do that. Maybe our, our, maybe, maybe our parents raised us to think we needed to be perfect. Maybe we are raising our children to think they need to be perfect. But that's not the way that God sees us. God sees us with all of our imperfections. My friend Ben Garrison, who used to be the, the pastor at Wesley United Methodist Church, not this one, in Champaign-Urbana, wrote a book. And he talked about the church, warts and all. We have those. We have those imperfections and we have those blemishes. But amazingly, God looks right past those and says, I love you anyway. I love you so much. I love you so much that I want you to be with me forever. Yeah. And I want you to be with me forever. You get to be a star in a little bit, okay? Sometimes you just need a change, and I still got it. <laughs> there is any one of a number of different ways for us to look and to see, for us to understand how much it is that God loves us. There are any one of a number of different ways to do that. One of the ways is just simply in popular music. And we're going to look at one now. Those of you who are young girls, may understand who this is, or those of you who are familiar with young girls may understand who this is. This is One Direction.
that could be God's song to you. I don't always like myself all that much, certainly not the way I look. I'm an old, fat, bald man. And what's the love about me? What's lovable about me? Not much. Not much. I've had freckles. Now we call them age spots. I really don't want to know how much I weigh, even though I step on the scale every day. I don't want to know how much I weigh. And I have always hated the sound of my voice on tape. But God doesn't care. Think about this. I am still still married to the same girl that I married 28 years ago. And that's who I see when I get up in the morning, when I go to bed at night, when I look across the table. That's who I see. That's not who she sees when she looks at herself, but that's who I see. I doubt that she will ever. I doubt that my children will ever be able to love themselves as much as I love them. Those of you who have children, those of you who have a relationship, you know what I'm talking about. You understand that. That's how much God loves you, but more. If I can feel that way, if you can feel that way, how much more does God love you? God loves you so much. But God says, I don't want you to die. Ever. I want you to be with me. And there is nothing, nothing, nothing that you can do that will ever make me not want you to live with me forever. And God loves Layla too. But that's not Layla. Hey, Layla, wake up. We're going to prove to Layla that this happens today. We're going to put some water on her head. She's probably not going to like that. But that, that'll be all right. And you get to watch too, okay? What's your name? Sawyer? You'll be all right? He's scared to death. You want me to, you want to come with you? Yeah, okay. All right. I'm easy. Page 39 in your hymnal. You guys have to be up here. Are you going to stay with me the whole time? You know, it's okay. I think I'm probably going to need both hands. So I'm going to give you back to Bob. I am good. Oh, she is. She's. We got. This is important. Dad says, no, go to sleep. Are you all with me? Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. To the two of you, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, answer, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, answer, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and put your whole trust in his grace 
and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. If so, answer I do. Will you nurture this child? In Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life. If so, answer, I will. Now, for the rest of you, do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and now include this girl before you in your care? Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord, the earth. Tell God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and she who receives it to wash away her sin and clothe her in righteousness throughout her life, that dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Layla Renee Grace Black. She smiled. I baptize you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Maybe. This is Layla. I don't have to show her to you because you've all seen her before. I don't think there has ever been a child that has been waited 
upon with more anticipation than Layla. I wish I could get her to open up her big dark eyes and let you see her. That's all right. She'll wake up later. Today, Layla enters into the family of God in a special way. It's baptism. We're not exactly sure how baptism works, but we don't have to. I say a few words, you say a few words. I put a little water on her head, and then God does the rest. It's an amazing thing. It's an amazing treat. But it's also, for me today, on Easter Sunday, an incredible object lesson. This, she, is proof of how much God loves us. Look at this. Is there anything that is not perfect about her? Is there anything that is not perfect at all about her? But, well, is there anything that's not perfect about you? She just has a little ways to go to catch up with all of you. We accept her into Christ's family, uh, which she already was already, so, you know, I mean, that's okay. But we accept her into Christ's family in a way that, well, again, we don't understand. But it's a special thing for her, and it's truly a special thing for us. Do I have to give her back? <laughs> Debbie, can we keep her? <laughs> God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace. Let's sing a hymn. That'll wake her up.
and know that down to the deepest part of your soul know that he is risen and so are you amen Amen. 